Hello, hello guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to design a reinforced concrete flat slab as per Eero code. We'll first of all look at the definition of a flat slab and then we'll delve into how to design it. We would also look at how to detail the slab and then finally, towards the end of this tutorial, we'll develop a calculation sheet to design a flat slab using Python. As usual, this is going to be an interesting tutorial, so stay glued to your seat till the end. So to start off, we'll look at the definition of a flat slab. What is a flat slab? So the basic definition of a flat slab, in this case, a reinforced concrete flat slab, is a slab that is supported by point support or columns rather than line loads such as beams. So as seen on the sketch, we have the flat part here which is at the top of the columns. So that is the flat slab. And it's supported by a point support, what we call the columns. Right? So the columns are beneath the flat slab and they provide the support for the slab system. So that would be the basic definition of a reinforced concrete flat slab. So let us write it down. So it is a flat slab. And bear in mind, we are dealing with reinforced concrete flat slab. So, what is a flat slab? The basic definition, a slab which is supported by point support or columns instead of line loads such as beams or other types of line loads. Now that we know the definition of a flat slab, let us look at some of the advantages of using a flat slab compared to using the conventional slab with drop beams or line loads. So the first advantage is because is because we don't have drop down beams here, there's increase in floor to floor height of your building because there's elimination of the line loads, which normally are the drop down beams beneath the slab. So you have increase in the floor to floor height of your building. So that will be the first one. The next advantage will be because there are, there are no drop down beams, there's faster construction. There is no need to provide support for the beams or prop it. It's just the slab. You just do the form work for the slab and there are no drop down beams. And that usually consumes time. So there are no drop down beams. So this saves time. So this ensures a faster construction. So we can say ensures faster construction. And then we can say it's less expensive. Less expensive because, because of the elimination of drop down beams. Right, so that would be the basic advantages of flat slab compared to the other types of slabs or conventional slabs. And to enable us to design the slab, so we have this example as seen on the screen. So we have a two by two slab panel, which is supported by both peripheral and internal columns. So the LX direction or the X direction, we have 7,500. And 7500 and in the ly direction we have 6000 mm yes so the slab thickness so our geometric properties of slab or the geometry of the slab so the slab thickness we are first of all starting with 250 mm or 0.25 meters again the column sizes are all 300 by 300 mm or 0.3 by 0.3 meters and then the column spacing in the x direction is 7500 and in the y direction is 6000 mm now let's look at the loading on the slab loading on the slab so first of all we'll consider the permanent action or the dead load of the slab so let's consider the permanent action or the dead load which is the same as the dead load since we are using Euro code, mostly it is permanent action instead of dead load. So the dead load was what we used in the BS codes. 
and the permanent action or added load will be the self weight of the slab multiplied by the unit weight of concrete, which is 25 kilonewton per cubic meter. So since we are using a slab thickness of 0 0.25, in this case, the self weight of the slab, right? So self weight, weight of slab will be, so the unit weight of concrete, which is 25 kilonewton, per cubic meter multiplied by the thickness of the slab, which is 0 0.25, and that will give us 6.25 kilonewton. So I'll give it 6.25 kilonewton per square meter. So action, so the permanent action comprises the self-weight of the slab, as well as if there are any finishes on the slab. So let's allow finishes of 1.6 kilonewton per square meter for the flooring, the screed, and all finishes. So, finishes, finishes. Let us allow 1.6 kilonewton per square meter. Right. So that means our total permanent action will be so total total permanent action action will be 6.25 plus 1.6 which will give us 7.85 which will give us 7.85 kilonewton per square meter so that is our permanent action right so let us consider the life load or the variable action so that would be which is the same as our life load, life load. So we're going to take that as 2.5 kilonewton per square meter. That is for an office, right? So we have our permanent action, which is the same as the dead load, and we have the variable action or life load, which is 2.5 kilonewton per square meter. So our characteristic loading will be, you know, that is when you multiply it by the, the partial factor of safety. So in this case, our characteristic, characteristic loading or ultimate loading. So our characteristic loading will be, so the partial factor of safety for the permanent action. So 1.35 multiplied by our permanent action, which is 7.85 plus 1.5 being the partial factor of safety for variable action multiplied by 2.5 and that will give us and that will give us 14.348 kilonewton per square meter so that's the value of our characteristic loading or ultimate load so just to recap the geometric properties of the slab so the slab thickness is 250 mm or 0 0.25 meters and then we said the column sizes are 300 by 300 mm or 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 meters again we said the column spaces in the LX direction or in the X direction are 7,500 or 7.5 meters. And again, for the LY or the Y direction is 6,000 mm or 6 meters. Again, we looked at the loading on the slab and we said the permanent action or the dead load comprises the self weight of the slab and we computed that to be 6.25 kilonewton per square meter. And we allowed finishes of 1.6 kilonewton per square meter. Added them together, we had a total permanent action of 7.85 kilonewton per square meter. And then again, we said the variable action of the life load is 2.5 kilonewton per square meter. That is for an office space. We then went ahead to calculate the characteristic loading or the ultimate loading acting on the slab. On the slab. So we multiply the pressure factor of safety for the permanent action and variable action. 
and we arrived at a value of 14.348 kN per square meter being the characteristic loading or the ultimate loading acting on the slab.